As Friday was a very dovish day in real estate, now the Fudsters are out on Monday. Why? I'm gonna go over several different stories uh, of, of FUD out there, but I'm also gonna go over some stories actually in real estate today that are very relevant to what's happening now and not looking back at the last two months or three months. So welcome everyone to Real Estate Daily. My name is Troy and every day we go over the latest news in real estate, housing, and the mortgage markets. Now, before we jump into it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, boom. We wanna grow this channel. We wanna give you the best five to 10 minutes in real estate on a daily basis. Before I jump into the news articles here, I also wanna to talk to you about the importance of having the right real estate agent on your side. If you're a buyer, there are a few things that I, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna spend 30 seconds. When you are picking an agent, you're not pick, you're typically not picking them because they're a friend, friend of a family, uh, you know, you feel bad because they're not making any money. Those aren't the reasons why you wanna pick a real estate agent. You wanna pick a real estate agent that has experience, that they can show you that they made at least one sale a month for the past 12 months. That means they're in the business, that they have some type of construction background. That's gonna be very handy when you're looking at homes and that they continue to work with multiple buyers because they're writing offers and they know what's happening in the real estate market right now. Not Johnny, come, not Johnny come lately who hasn't made a sale in three months, doesn't know what's happening today and just keeps telling you to, per, to, to write an offer on every single home that you see, regardless if it's a doghouse or a mansion. So with that being said, let's jump into the FUD, the FUD day. So it's FUD day Monday. Now I, I saw that this, uh, you know, I saw several different uh, media outlets come out today and it's it seems to be the appropriate thing that sells newspapers or sells media online it's the fud the negativity and negativity sells positivity just gets pushed off to the side let's go take a look at at some of these things these are today's headlines in real estate so if you were to go and hit real estate news and click on it these are the top stories as of today and it says nine hours ago and this is from Axios, it says collapse in home prices is coming. Expert says opinion piece, no clue. I'm going to say this once and I'll say it to every single one of these, uh, these um, articles. Has anybody here have a real estate license? Number one, does anybody here? Number two, ever sold a home? Okay. Sold a home in that you were on a side of a buyer or a seller representing them. And number three, when's the last time you've even been on the market and been boots on the ground? You haven't. And that's what's funny. All these little bozos out there are just making, making things up so it makes it look like they can get their articles read quicker than if they wrote something positive. Now, as we saw on Monday, or last Friday and on, on Wednesday, we saw a lot of positive articles. Why? Interest rates are going down and we're having prices kind of float down. Is that the best time to buy or is it the worst time to buy? Let me see. 16 years, 17 years of doing this, the best time to buy is when both of those are on the decline because I can get the best deals and I can get really fantastic interest rates that continue to fall. This is FUD, it's garbage. This is called, this is called sensationalistic journalism garbage. Let's go look at Bloomberg, which is kind of up there on the second row. It says US housing enters deep freeze with sellers and buyers sideline. I don't know about you, but over the weekend, me and the team was out there showing homes, wrote offers, and I mean, especially my business partner, wrote six offers, multiple offers on every single house. Now, why am I saying that? Because there's no inventory and the buyers are out in droves right now. They've been trying to buy a house. Interest rates were high, but now interest rates have dropped a anywhere from 50 to 75 basis points. And now they're out there and they say, I can afford it again, right? I don't want to get caught up in all this garbage inflation because what hurts most in inflation? What was the number one factor when they, when they calculate the CPI number? It is, it is housing. It's the number one. It's called shelter. It's 33% of it. 
And we know that so many cities across the United States that are factored into shelter have frozen rents. So if rents are going not up, not down, it really skews those numbers. And if you are really, really a renter, you're getting punished. I mean punished. That's why all Bloomberg or Axios or what is this? All these different FUD articles that are out there, they're all a bunch of crap. Okay. If you think that the housing market's going down, then you're not intelligent. You know, here in Southern California, they're fighting over all the scraps. There's just not much out there. I do the numbers every single week. Last week's numbers were atrociously low. Now, it was Thanksgiving, so I'm not going to put that in perspective. All I'm saying is anybody looking for a home this weekend knows that there were people at the house, there are multiple offers, and you're seeing the market kind of bounce back because rates have gone down. Next article. Inflation boosts U.S. household spending by $433 a month. On average, Moody finds. So thank you very much for the new government that came in a, a, a year and a half ago. You have now cost us $433 a month. Now, why do I make this a big issue? Because again, shelter is a big issue on here. So let's read this. Inflation rate raised spending by $433 a month on an average household, according to Moody's analyst of October 2022 Consumer Price Index or CPI. Okay. So what that, what that means is that if you have a steady mortgage every single month, guess what inflation does for you? It's a little less on you. That's why we say if you have an electric car, then, it, then inflation affects you less even more. But if you absolutely rent and you have a gas car, you're getting crushed. And guess who's getting crushed? It's the middle to lower class. They're the ones that are most affected by inflation. If you don't understand that, then you don't get what is happening out there in the real world. And I know that we just had some, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to say it that I, I, over and over, okay? Inflation affects the, the people who own homes outright or have a monthly mortgage payment that is stable every single month. It affects them less. And in fact, they're in such better situation because as inflation goes up, that means the dollar is going down. Okay. It's, it's actually going to be worth a little less, right? You can, you can, you can buy less with that dollar. Well, if that's a fact, that means that that steady mortgage payment in time, over time will be less and less as you get pay raises and as other things in your life, you continue to get more and more money coming out. I mean, stocks, bonds, crypto, doesn't matter. When those things go up, your, your payment's the same. You get affected less from inflation. Next article. Now, I, I, I respect this. This is a Fortune magazine. It says, Morgan Stanley slashes its U.S. housing uh, market outlook. Here's where it sees home prices correction in 2023. Now, I like this article. Why? Because it's, it's more realistic when you read it. It's not crashing. It's not collapsing it's not it's not the garbage that some bozo that also writes on barbie dolls and and you know ken dolls is also writing on real estate they're going over real numbers okay so they're saying that for the rest of this year you know and for this year of 2022 nationwide we're probably going to see about a four percent lower than the year prior four percent of home value is going down Next year, they see about 7%. Now, I'm not going to go jump in to make a prediction yet, but I'm going to tell you that the, the, it's going to all be fixed upon two things. Okay, One is how much more we're going to raise the, the, uh, the Fed's going to keep raising rates. And number two, as they slow it down, will those mortgage companies see some type of light in the tunnel and they will lower interest rates? Now, a lot of you out there really feel that the Fed is tied to mortgage rates and they and they are, but not directly. It's the hedge that all these big mortgage companies come out and they set their own rates. So that's why you see a big fluctuation and that's why you're, you're told by many mortgage influencers as well as real estate influencers and myself that you need to go shop your mortgage. That's the most important. 
Okay, shopping your mortgage. Number two, you need to have the you need to have the best real estate agent out there. Again, hiring somebody because somebody else told you you need to go and interview real estate agents before you go ahead and use them as a buyer's agent or a seller's agent. So I like I like that they they're realistic here. The numbers seem a lot more realistic. They give uh they go over exactly what they feel should happen. I, I like that idea. I like that 7% for next year and 4% this year. It makes more sense. It's just not arbitrary garbage that's going to sell. All right, next article. Caliber Homes Building Material Innovator raises $25 million in the latest funding round. Well, I kind of like this idea. Uh, even though it's it's going to save the environment, it's ESG uh, friendly, about, about 80% actually. Uh, it should be. You know, I know that when you look at lumber and you're looking at, you know, concrete, cement, whatever, you're looking at a lot of oil and gas, uh, you know, fossil fuels that are taken in consideration. Here, caliber companies, as well as several other innovative companies on um, building homes, they are making certain, they're making like a level, they're making, they want to call it manufactured levels at their facilities. And what they do is then they haul those levels out into a new community and they just drop them down and they level up. So you can do one level, two level, three level. I'm not sure how this is all going to work out. They haven't really had anything out there that's really that's really been a force in a new community. But if they can get with a builder, now a builder doesn't want to deal with this. So you need to get a land, a land purchaser. You purchase the land, you got to dig it out, you got to put a foundation down, and then you're going to drop these levels on top. And they're saying it's about 15% less in, in the amount of what it costs for the home. Yet the homes are not going to look stylish. We don't have anything going on there. They're supposed to heat or supposed to insulate the home a lot better than a stick built home. Now, I don't know about that. Again, a lot of these ESG friendly companies have all made these quote unquote uh, remarks, but they have nothing to back them up. They're not comparing them to a new, you know, modern home from Lennar or KB Homes, you know, so we want to see this, but I know it's the future. These building materials uh, hopefully will withstand it. We haven't seen them tested. There's no testing out there because no major companies are using them. But I like that this is a possibility. I don't really believe that 15% is gonna really make a big difference. When you think about it, everyone's gonna be yelling, hey, try, try, 15% makes a whole difference. Well, by the time they sell the plot of land, they're looking to be profitable. They're not looking to break even. So that 15% spread is usually what most of these builders make. I'm just telling you, uh, that's, that's the reality of it all. Now, spec homes, possibly, but again, if we're looking at it, it's not been tested. So let's don't get too excited, but no one thing. It's going to be the future and the future starting slow and today. And last thing, <coughs> excuse me, is that as of last week, we saw interest rates continue to float down. We're getting closer and closer to the conforming being at six and a half. It went down 0.02. 30-year conforming is now at 6. Point, uh, excuse me, FHA is down to 6, uh, 6. 6.47. I want to see both of them in under 6.5. I know we have a couple weeks before the Fed meets on the 14th and 15th of December, and I believe we're going to see a 50, per, 50 basis point raise. If that's a fact, there's going to be a lot more rejoicing out there uh, for the moment. I don't know if it's going to continue beyond those few days, uh, depends on what is being discussed with our Fed Chairman Powell afterwards. He's been kind of hawkish, but as we we fa found out last Wednesday, people tore that that Fed minutes up when they were released last Wednesday, and they were like, "Ah, I sound hawkish," but he but he really sounded a little dovish in there too as well. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for joining me today. I went a little long. I wanted to go over a few things with you. I, I know there's a lot of FUD out there if I'm a buyer. I've said this now for two and a half weeks. This is the best time to buy in the fourth quarter. Now, going out there and showing homes and writing offers, I know it's the best time. There's hardly any homes on the market that went on last week. The buyers are still the buyers. Sellers are, are getting, there's less and less sellers every single week going into holiday season. Best time to buy? I think so. Right now, the last 
14 days, absolutely. You guys take care and I will see you tomorrow.